Welcome back for another episode of the Trans Atheist with Ariane and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the Trans Atheist with Ariane. I'm Ariane. Today we're going to be talking about transphobic board meetings across the country. These are happening in school board meetings, county supervisors' offices. The clip that we're going to kind of respond to today is out of Shasta County, California. And um, a lot of this, we've seen groups that have kind of risen up through this, like Moms for Liberty, which, which kind of was inspired by like anti-mask rhetoric and is now really taken this transphobic line. So we'll kind of see what they have to say. We'll respond to some of this and, and see if we can break down some of the points. Let's put it this way. KRCR is part of woke, which hurts your children. You think that? But that's true. Okay, I'd love for once if somebody could just give an actual, understandable definition for the word woke when they use it as an insult. It's become just a catch-all phrase. Basically, anything they disagree with becomes woke. If you talk about racism, then you're woke. If you talk about the fact that there are different types of families, including LGBT families, you're woke. If you talk about, you know, trans people and transition and the scientific studies that have proven that transgender medicine actually helps the lives of trans people, then you're woke. It's really become a ridiculous word that it means so much of everything that it's become to where it means nothing. Being called woke is not an insult to me because the opposite of woke would be asleep. And I think some of these people are so ignorant that they're damn near unconscious. So calling me woke, yeah, that's fine. We'll just call them unconscious because they don't seem to be thinking about anything they say anymore. We need to talk about the elephant in the room, which is we have a ton of children who are very confused. Strangely, I will completely and totally agree with her on this point. Being trans, when you're first figuring out, is most definitely very confusing. When you have an entire world around you where people are exactly what they were assigned at birth, and you know that that doesn't represent who you are, yes, it's confusing. And these kids are definitely going to be very confused by that situation. That's why you get proper treatment, proper help. And proper help is not conversion therapy. It's not ignoring the problem and thinking it'll go away. It's making sure that they have a therapist that can help them walk through it, which is what trans medicine is for kids. There's a lot of therapy involved to help them understand their feelings, to see if it's persistent over time. And if so, then we look at other options. But yes, it can be very confusing in the, in the process, and probably even more so, I would imagine, for parents who don't understand it. What are we going to do about our, the transgender group? What are we going to do about that? That's a huge thing. There, uh, it's going to come to Reading. What are we going to do when, when kids are being subject to their teachers saying, hey, you want to be a, the opposite sex? Sure, go ahead. And we can get you, we can get you some uh, hormones for that, too against against Quiet, thank you i appreciate my time up here for my first, first and foremost rights. that comment of what are we going to do about the transgender group that is a frightening way to even discuss the issue i don't know if this lady even understands how much she sounds like a particular funny mustached <clears throat> gentleman from the 30s and 40s but that is some scary rhetoric and secondly teachers are not telling kids you can be the opposite sex no one is encouraging what we're talking about is responding to kids who present with gender dysphoria who present and say this is who i am it's about respecting who they say they are their internal identity we have enough science on this to know that gender identity is not a changing type of thing. It's an immutable characteristic that is usually set at about the age group that these kids are in. At the very least, we know that. So, yeah, no one is telling the kids you can be 
transgender if you want to. Let's try this on and we'll get you some hormones in order to, and we'll hide it from your parents. That's not happening. Number one, medical treatment still requires a parent. When you're dealing with young kids like these people are normally talking about, even if they had a parent's consent, hormones would not be even an issue that would be brought up. Trans kids do not get hormones. If hormones come into the question, they come into the time frame when kids are going through puberty naturally anyway, which is going to be considerably later than what this lady is implying. I personally could see in a video the real-time movement of the file from the Secretary of State's office to Beijing and back with changed votes. But the elephant in the room needs to be addressed. It is a fact that conspiracies are real. Okay, so now we end up with some lovely election denialism and a mix of conspiracy theory about the election. And the reason that this is actually, I'm actually keeping this in, is because the two are very much so linked. The transphobia of this movement is very much so a, an aspect of Trumpism. That is the whole thing, that Trump has become this near deity, and anything that differs from them is therefore the enemy. Trump has latched on to the transphobia. We've seen that with his video a while back, um, where he talked about his policy if he were reelected and basically eliminating all reference to trans people and any trans health care and all this type of craziness. But the two are absolutely linked to one another. First of all, I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I lift up this word as it is given this room and wisdom. And I just have courage to stand with what I feel is right and just help our country, our county, and your people stay closer to you. And let's away from Satan's wealth in Jesus' name. Amen. There's children that are now being threatened to be taken away from their parents if they don't go along with the confusion of transgenderism. Okay, so we start off with a bunch of religious mumbo jumbo. Then we go into this conspiracy theory that you know, they're ripping children from their home, that they're threatening these children, that you'll be taken away from your home. That's not actually what's happening. Um, I'm the last person that's going to advocate CPS always getting involved in every circumstance and foster care, you know, because we know the foster care system is largely broken in this country. The fact of the matter is, is in a lot of states, including Texas, that started these types of things, it's actually parents who love and accept their kids that are having it threatened that if they support their kids through gender transition, they'll lose their children. What we're talking about is a child with gender dysphoria diagnosed that is dealing with this and the state saying, we're not going to allow you to torture this child by refusing to get them proper treatment. Gender dysphoria is diagnosable. It is a long process to go through. But to think about it on the flip side, if a child has cancer and a parent refuses to get that child the proper care, that child will be removed from that parent's care, from their custody. That is just the way it happens. Well, when you don't address gender dysphoria, the rate of suicide is astronomical. So just like untreated cancer ends up being a death sentence. The same is true when you have a child in a situation that is presenting with gender dysphoria, is telling the family, this is who I am, and you have a family who refuses to accept that. In Ohio, we've seen this before with Leela Alcorn about, I want to say it was around 2015, if I'm not mistaken, when Leela walked out into traffic and ended her own life because her family refused to accept who she was, and she couldn't see a way forward anymore. So there are detrimental effects to this bigotry, and that's what's really happening. And frankly, if a parent is refusing to accept their child for who they are, if they are refusing to get that child proper care, which is gender-affirming care, then I don't really have that much of a problem with us admitting the fact 
that this is a form of child abuse. That is the true child abuse. When you are neglecting the needed care of your child because of your own religiously inspired hatred and bigotry. All election personnel to watch 2,000 Mules, which is a, uh, a movie, and election code videos as part of their training. And we finish out with some more stolen election conspiracy theory. So anyway, um, that kind of round, rounds out the video. Um, what I wanted to really talk about here is the front that we're seeing, the transphobic conspiracy theory, QAnon, Moms for Liberty type of bullshit coming from, is on the local level. You may not be seeing this on national news every day, but that's because it's happening at your school board meeting. It's happening at your public library. It's happening at your county supervisors or your town council meetings. They are going from the bottom, the lowest levels of a local government and moving their way up. This is why you have to stay informed on the local level. These national issues that they've created, they do translate to your local government. We have them happening here in our area recently in a neighboring county of mine. We have seen people starting to petition the um, county library to remove books. Any books that include any message about LGBT people, automatically they want it moved. You know, because the books, they say it has sexuality in it because it's talking about being gay. At the same time, they have no problem with the Bible being on the shelf, which includes references to rape and to murder and to genocide and to incest and to blood magic. And that is perfectly fine, but they want to remove a book because it says that Johnny has two dads or, you know, I am jazz where we talk about, you know, a transgender child on a gender or on a um, age appropriate level. And I'm not saying that I want to have the Bible removed from public libraries. I think libraries should be a bastion of ideas, even ideas that I disagree with. Because if I want to learn about an idea that I disagree with, that I want to better educate myself and have a better debate and be better informed when I'm dealing with someone, I should be able to go to my public library and pick up that book. That is what a library is about. It is about being that place that holds knowledge. And when we talk about the school system, which they are really actively involved in, every school is publicly funded. That means, these public schools at least, that means that their money comes from the taxpayer. And I hate to be the one to shock you, but yes, Christians pay taxes. Personal taxes. Their churches don't. They get out of it. But... The individuals pay taxes. People that have conservative beliefs pay, uh, pay taxes. People who are progressive or liberal pay taxes. Straight people pay taxes. Cis people pay taxes. But here's another thing. Gay families pay taxes. Trans people pay taxes that support these schools. Why? Because these schools are supposed to include all of us. Our government is supposed to include all of us. I don't care about your views. If you want to tell your kid when they get home, we believe this is wrong, fine. But that doesn't mean your child gets the right to bully a trans kid at school. You can tell them how that kid's going to hell all day long, and I will accuse you of some shitty parenting because you are a shitty parent. But you got the right to be a shitty parent on that type of level, but... Going into these public board meetings and, and spreading this propaganda and trying to make these low-level changes that have real impact on the residents is what's going on. Stay informed. If it's happening in your community, get involved. If they're protesting or they're, they're protesting a drag queen story hour, be out there as a counter-protester. Support the business that's doing it and let them know we support you and we appreciate you. Your public library, when they start doing this crap about removing books, get involved if you have the opportunity. Speak at one of the meetings if you need to. Let them know that these crazies that come out full force 
are not the sole representation of the community, that there are other people, and they have a job to represent all of the people in this great marketplace of ideas. And we don't let one group cut out all the ideas because they have a religiously motivated bigotry based on a 2,000-year-old book written by Bronze Age goat herders. Believe it if you want. Teach it to your kids. Teach it in your church. But you don't get to force that on the rest of us. That is going to be it for the trans atheist. Hopefully this video does not get blocked or anything because of my profanity usage at the end. But anyway, if you have any ideas, please send them my way. And hopefully, I'll see you for the next episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.